YouTube, what is going on? Air of Carthage here. A couple of players here. We got Halo and Black Phillip. Halo, you may have seen on the channel before. I think we've seen Black Phillip on here as well, too. It's part of the XMT group. Uh, Halo has hosted um, some events on my channel before, and we've seen replays. I, I know he likes to play Chaos. He's got his Chaos Archaeon, the Ever Chosen build here, which is going to be pretty cool. And he's going to be going up against the Sisters of Twilight and their newly, um, <laughs> newly updated Wood Elves. And the sisters are here on Kethan Har as well, which is their dragon mount. And we're going to get to see some other new units here, like the great Stagmites, uh, which should be pretty exciting. Um, for Chaos, there are several units of Chaos Warriors making up um, kind of the secondary or main line. And then the front line is going to be Chaos Marauders. All this is smart. All these are shielded units that can withstand missile fire. And honestly, all of these units trade good with just about any Wood Elf infantry out there. Um, except for maybe the really high-end stuff, which I would have to test that to kind of see how that plays out. I am curious to see how Chaos Warriors trade with something like a Bladesinger, though I don't expect to see Bladesingers be a frequent pick um, with the Wood Elves because of their extremely high cost. There is a Hell Cannon firing and two units of Dragon Ogres, and unfortunately for us, we won't get to see a Dragon Ogre on Zote fight, um, <laughs> which would kind of be like a mirror match in certain terms. Um, anyway, we're going to see our Kaon starting off the battle with some uh, nice fireball here. And it is aimed at the Branch Wraith, and it does tremendous damage. So our Kaon doing well. The Sisters of Twilight are out front. Uh, and they are covered by their archers, which is why you're not seeing an attack by the Marauder Horsemen with throwing axes. And they're going to set up and try and destroy the Hell Cannon, which they eventually will, um, given, given some time to do that. But the Hell Cannon is attempting to get its damage done before that time happens. Uh, it started off with a couple chevrons, so don't be fooled uh, by that. Uh, I think some of the last money for the army spend ended up into the uh, chevrons. And you can see a couple of misses there for the Hell Cannon, which is pretty tough since there's going to be a considerable um, considerable skirmish portion here for the, uh, the Wood Elves. The cannon, all the hits it can get would be better. Now that was a good one. Right into the Loex Tricksters and some Glade Guard. You can see that shot up the experience meter right there as well. There are some uh, glade, ri uh, glade Riders with Spears out here, but the main line uh, for the Wood Elves is just Eternal Guard, which honestly is probably about as good as a pick as you can make versus Chaos, it, depending on the funds that you have. Obviously, Blade Singers would do more damage, um, but Eternal Guard have nice AP damage and can protect against large as well, as well as being low cost. They will not defeat Chaos Warriors, but they will at least trade some damage. Look at this beautiful burning head from our Kaon early on here just absolutely ravages a couple of Wood Elf Archer units. That was beautiful. And then there's another Archer unit down right here as our Kaon manages to get in there and get away from the Loex Tricksters. He's going to go back behind his own lines. The Hell Cannon has been shut down. It did pick up almost a Chevron, though, in the time that it was firing, which is somewhat impressive. And a nice Pendulum here from the Branch Wraith absolutely rips up some Chaos Marauders. I'm surprised we didn't see that Pendulum on top of a uh, Chaos Warrior. Like, uh, it just seems like that would have been a much better target, but we did see a breath attack from the sisters on a Chaos Warrior there. Um, so that was a brutal breath attack, actually, from Keth and Har. Uh, the Dragon Ogres are being held in reserve. There are some more Chaos Warriors in reserve as well, which, good to use those reserves. Let the Wood Elves spin their uh, arrows and magic on the cheaper uh, Marauder units. Look at this, Archaeon has singled out the uh, Branch Wraith. And that is a fight that isn't going to last very long. Archaeon's magical attacks are going to rip straight through the physical resistance of a lot of the Wood Elves. And uh, Archaeon hits like a truck. Um, he can hit really hard. Don't underestimate him in melee. There are certainly limits to which he can function, but if you're not careful, he will beat you senseless really quickly, especially if he's got the Slayer of Kings active. Um, and remember, he's also got access to, like, Cascading Fire Cloak, which, or, sorry, Flaming Sword of Ruin, which you can see here bumps him up, and he still has absurd damage. And the fire damage actually does work good against most Wood Elf units as well. You can see here there's a weakness to fire. That could be just from casting. Yeah, it is, because it just dropped off. But all the tree units, um, uh, he's obviously got um, uh, Kindle Flame, which uh, adds that weakness to fire for a few seconds after casting. But it's a good, a good pick in general against um, the Wood Elves' uh, fire lore because they have multiple heroes and units that are weak to fire. 
Not to mention the fact that Burning Head, as you saw, is just good against Archer lines if those lines aren't able to dodge in time. Let's see another Breath Attack. It's going into a rather weak Chaos Warrior here rather than what I would have thought right here with the very high health Chaos Warrior. So Wood Elves have a slight advantage at the moment according to the power bar. Archaon is back here trying to beat his way through some Waste Stalkers. The Great Stag Knights are fighting uh, another unit of Dragon Ogres, but they've had the assistance of Loex Tricksters, so they've been able to survive the first unit of Dragon Ogres, which is coming back for a second run. And then Archaon is going to come in here and try and get a piece of the Sisters and Kethenhar. And given the opportunity, he will get a piece of them. Um, the Sisters do have Poison Melee Attack, though, which is pretty important because it can uh, drop some of the stats on the units in the areas surrounding them when they get into melee. I'll just let you all see this uh, overhead here. Sisters, uh, remember, they keep firing their bow, I think, regardless of whether in, they're in melee. So that also makes the Sisters doubly effective in that regard, um, because you'll see their bow just kind of continue to fire while they're in the air or on the ground. And like I said, it can cause a lot of damage. Now, Loex Tricksters here are getting a hold of Archaon. He's going to flee out of this fight, but uh, this is a unit which will do tremendous damage. Um, tremendous damage, and especially with that um, ability there, Storm of Blades. To see Archaon get out here, use the Slayer of Kings, and try and finish off the Waystalker. Look at the hits he puts on that unit. That's what I was talking about right there. He does have to flee away from Loex Tricksters, but there's a lot of support here. The um, Marauder Horsemen who were routed earlier have come back, and they can now try and pick at the Sisters as they're up in the air. As long as they're careful, they're getting a little bit involved here. Looks like they're trying to chase off these Glade Guard. They'll have to be careful because there's still a lot of damage they can receive. They're very squishy units. You can see a concentrated effort here by Chaos to get the archers off the field. Nice breath attack by the dragons, going to cause some extra damage to the Marauder Horsemen. Those Marauder Horsemen are badly, badly needed to take the sisters out, so they'll want to keep a very safe distance from Loex Tricksters, which are one of the only infantry units left because, I mean, with this type of infantry matchup, Eternal Guard versus Chaos Warrior, Chaos Warriors will win um, without without an outside influence swapping that fight like a pendulum or a dragon breath, they will win that fight. Um, and they'll win it convincingly. Uh, Chaos Warriors are actually pretty darn good against low armor units. They uh, they have a pretty solid attack and defense spread. You can see that here. And mix that with a silver shield and 100 armor. Um, 20 charge bonus. Like They're a very well-rounded unit for the price. Uh, they won't be good at AP, but they'll be good uh, against anything low armor. So we get a we get a heavyweight fight here with some uh, dragon ogres left over against the uh, tri uh, Loex tricksters and the sisters of Twilight. And the sisters of Twilight here really showing uh, their their prowess because of the support from Loex tricksters. They are able to win this fight, albeit it's a bit of a pyrrhic win, as it nearly sends them routing. But they do get Archaon the Ever Chosen off the field after taking a savage beating at his hands. A little bit of friendly fire there from the sisters, but probably still important to be getting these shots in. Uh, Loex Tricksters uh, putting up an impressive uh, display. We'll see what kind of damage they cause after the fight because of that sweet new damage and damage value stat that we've seen added by Creative Assembly. Those are extremely handy. Um, you can see the sisters here chasing out Archaon. There's a bit of a price to pay though because the Marauder Horsemen are nearby throwing axes. Um, now, remember though that the sisters have a special ability up their sleeves. It's this conjoined destiny. They can get quite a bit of healing when their hit points drop below 20%. Um, I don't know exactly what triggers it. It says disabled if. Um, so I, I, I don't know if it triggers exactly when they're below 20%. I mean, I would have to assume that based on what it says because it doesn't say anything about a chance of uh, hitting. There goes the last ammunition from the sisters. They have done some pretty solid damage. There's a lot of Chaos Warriors left. Um, a lot of Chaos Warriors. A Forest Dragon does not have particularly high armor in this case with the Sisters. I don't know about a standard Forest Dragon, but it's only 50 armor. So the Chaos Warriors won't be stopped necessarily by just armor value alone. Though what they're going to be good at is Terror, and you can see that immediately happening. So Chaos is going to have to keep their units tight together, but they don't have a leader. So even, yeah, right there it triggered. Look at that healing. Boom. All of a sudden back to 26, uh, 2,600 hit points. And that, that had an immediate effect on the power bar, which is kind of shifting around right now. And honestly, this is going to be a very close fight. Terror is going to be a real problem for Chaos. 
but the sheer number of enemies is going to be a real, real problem for the Sisters of Twilight. And remember that pulling out of these fights is actually harder now than it used to be because of the changes in this patch, especially with some cavalry sitting nearby, but again, uh, the terror is going to be a huge potential problem. At the moment, the Chaos Infantry is holding it together. There's there's no outside forces acting here, like there's no shot in the back penalty, attacked in the back penalty. There's no other um, things that are hurting them. They're managing to hold it together, probably because the, the local numbers are helping their uh, leadership. But look there, there goes a Terrified. And usually where you see one, you're going to see another. I'm surprised this Chaos Marauder hasn't Terrified out yet. But, I mean, a really stellar job being done by the Warriors of Chaos here against this dragon, all things considered. Still has 1,900 hit points, but the longer it sits in this fight, it's going to start to take some damage. And you can see that it is trickling down because there are a lot of units picking at it. And uh, it's going to take its toll. So if the, if the Wood Elves can't get a Terror out here real soon, they could lose. And speaking of, here goes some routing. <laughs> it actually isn't necessarily due to Terror in this case. Look at this, a great Stagmite coming back. This could be enough, just enough, a rear attack penalty to trigger a bunch of Terror, and it did. See that? It combined, got the leadership low enough, and then the Terror took effect on two units. So that is a tough break. Now, the the Hell Cannon stunties here are the only thing that can't be broken from a leadership standpoint. The rest of the Chaos units are regrouping relatively quick, but look, another Eternal Guard coming back here, so... This is going to be crazy close on this finish. The Sisters of Twilight down to 854. They're trying to finish the Stunties and the Marauder Horsemen. You can see the Sisters actually starting to waver now too because they're being attacked in the rear and there's so many other enemy units around. The, the Power Bar actually says this is slightly in favor of Chaos, but I can't believe this Chaos Stunty is still alive and it's such a big deal that it is because it helps keep this fight going longer. And Chaos needs that because all their other units are just literally on the brink of, of uh, leaving the battlefield permanently. Speaking of leaving the battlefield permanently, the Eternal Guard just made that decision. Sisters of Twilight now 142 kills, only 621 hit points. And this one is going to be a butt-clinching finish, but Chaos <laughs> manages to pull it out as the Sisters of Twilight route kind of at the last second there. Holy crap. What a fight. That was a good one between Halo and Black Phillip. Um, fun display between the Wood Elves and Chaos. I Obviously, I'm not a professional player, and I haven't played enough uh, multiplayer recently to be able to say all of these things with a surety, but I'm just going to give you just some, some thoughts from a high level here. In many ways, Chaos can still be useful against the Wood Elves, despite any upgrades that the Wood Elves have taken, and that's because so many of their units are shielded. Marauders are relatively affordable, and Chaos Warriors are also relatively affordable for the bang for buck they can provide you against the Wood Elves. Now, the Wood Elves have obviously gotten some pretty substantial upgrades to their cavalry in terms of that they have cheap cavalry now, which could help contend maybe with the uh, Marauder Horsemen, and then they have great Stag Knights, which can deal armor-piercing damage, and so now, normally Wild Riders were just mostly a threat to uh, Chaos Marauders, uh, whenever they're charging forward, but uh, Great Stag Knights could even be a big threat to Chaos Warriors, who are not braced for that charge. Um, and so there are some changes, and then you have Zotes out there too, which could be used for the Wood Elves, potentially, against Chaos as well. Um, I was actually kind of surprised to see the Sisters on the Dragon here. Personally, I would kind of just lean towards bringing them without the Dragon Mount, and then spending the extra money elsewhere in the army. But there are probably going to be times... Uh, dragons kind of overall took a nerfing based on what happened in the last patch. Uh, the fact that you can't pull pull out of fights as easily um, really kind of nerfed dragons fairly considerably because when they get trapped down on the ground, um, depending on the situation, it may or may not be very good for them. But uh, as you can see, the sister still managed to deal out a lot of uh, damage value here, 5,062, which I'm pretty certain is more than what they cost. Um, and so when I say pretty certain, I'm certain that that's more than what they cost. So, I mean, that's still a good value that they got here. So I'm not saying you shouldn't ever use a dragon, or the dragons are never good. In this case, it clearly was. It brought a ton of value. Um, you can see here the Branch Wraith uh, didn't really manage to gain that same value. Same with the Waystalker. I wouldn't expect to see that value from the Eternal Guard, but there's a few other units where I would, like Archers. Let's see those. 705, 258. Yeah, the Archers were managed very well here by Chaos. None of them really got much value. 
Loex Tricksters managed to eke out about 1100 which is probably similar to their cost, um, meaning that they, they weren't a wasted investment at all there. Um, and then right here, a good uh, I would say it's probably a good value on the Stag Knights. I'm pretty sure that's a little higher than their cost as well. Um, so quite a bit of damage done. But let's take a look on the Chaos side here. 2961 for a Kaon, not bad at all. Let's look at the Hell Cannon, only 678, so didn't quite pay for itself. 1,089 value on the uh, this uh, Marauder Horseman is actually pretty solid. And pretty decent value on the Dragon Ogres, though neither one was fully worth its cost in terms of the damage value. But still not bad at all. But uh, nice play by Chaos. I thought um, it was a really great mass up. Um, I think both these factions have things that can hurt each other. Uh, the Wood Elves have ranged and AP range if necessary. Um, Chaos has the better infantry. And... Uh, I, I, I wouldn't say more mobility options, um, because the Wood Elves now have a few more mobility options, but Chaos certainly can move fast and crash through lines. But again, remember that that type of behavior was slightly nerfed, and so that gives the Wood Elves probably a little bit better chance these days against that type of thing. But I still think that, um, yeah, we're definitely seeing uh, the effects of, of uh, Chaos being good against the infantry of the Wood Elves here, because the Eternal Guard lines... Uh, just got collapsed, even though they outnumbered the better Chaos Infantry and had the support of the Dragon um, and a Penumbral Pendulum uh, along with all that. So pretty impressive. I do want to check out one thing real quick. I'm going to go just run a quick test of uh, Blade Singers versus Chaos Warriors, and I want to show that to you all just because I'm curious. This is a curiosity for me. Can the Blade Singers um, punch against Chaos Warriors good enough to potentially ever justify their spend here? One of the risks in bringing them is, again, if the AI has a hell can or if the other player has a hell cannon, that could really hurt your blade singers. If the if they have javelin horsemen, that could really hurt your blade singers. Um, a fire spell, stuff like that. But just in a vacuum, I want to see how blade singers uh, go against chaos warrior. All right, I've got a test scenario set up. I'm using the uh, Pickany Lord for unit testing mod and the little map pack that is a sub mod of it. So we're going to be fighting this out in the pit which is a tiny map that makes this easy to do. Um, I picked uh, one Bladesinger unit at 1,200 cost to go against two Warriors of Chaos, which is going to ring in at um, 1,500 total cost. So I, I figured that I, I did this because if the Bladesingers um, can win this fight, and remember, Whirling Death isn't going to help them here. They don't want that. Uh, if the Bladesingers can win this fight, then there's certainly a potential value against Chaos because they would be punching above their cost. Um, if they can't win this fight, I might test them one-on-one -on -one against the Warrior of Chaos, but, you know, like I said, if they can win this one, then it is certainly an excellent showing for them. I want to make sure I get my charge right here. Now, the Warriors of Chaos are also going to do good against the Blade Singers because my Blade Singers don't have the armor to withstand their attacks. They do have some physical resistance and very solid uh, melee defense stats, so it's really going to depend on how fast the Blade Singers can tear their way through one of the uh, Warriors of Chaos units, and they are really shredding it, which is no surprise. No surprise. Now, we are not getting doubled up on by the second Chaos Warrior, which is kind of interesting, the AI is it's because they're set to defensive, most likely. But still, this will give us a, an interesting test. Now, one-on-one, -on -one, the Blade Singer is absolutely crushing this Chaos Warrior, and I mean crushing it. They've only lost seven models, and the Chaos Warrior is getting absolutely savaged. So that, that is an impressive showing for sure. Um, their charge is higher. Their melee defense is a hair lower. But they also have physical resistance of 10 or 20%. So that is significant. So one out of every five hits, basically, from the Chaos Warriors will be wasted. They already shred through one unit. They're going to go for a second one here. So you would have to keep Bladesinger safe um, from cavalry charges. You'd have to keep them safe from Marauder Horsemen, from Cannon Fire, uh, from Pendulums, from uh, Burning Heads, all kinds of stuff, okay? I'm just showing this in a vacuum just to get an idea of, in a best case scenario, how would the Blade Singers perform? And the answer is very, very well. They've already picked up one Chevron in almost a second with almost 100 kills against Chaos Warriors. So it is very clear that the Blade Singer is going to be up to the task in terms of giving the Wood Elves finally a 
a counter um, to the armored infantry of Chaos. Now, Wildwood Rangers, I haven't tested them in a while to see how they stack up in this fight, but this was most curious to me because the Blade Singers are new. Again, I'm not necessarily saying I would always recommend taking Blade Singers against Chaos or any of that kind of stuff. This will certainly have an impact in campaign because in campaign this gives you a way to just go head to head with Chaos Infantry. Um, at least, uh, at least like this. I don't know how they'll stack up against Chosen. That's a whole other story. But nonetheless, they stack up extremely well uh, against the standard Chaos Warriors. Uh, absolutely, no doubt here. That is 117 kills and uh, tremendous value that they were able to land there too. Let's end this. Take a look at the uh, statistics screen. An impressive performance. Blade Singers are kind of a niche pick because they do have those vulnerabilities. But when they get into that niche, they kick butt. Like big time. Uh, big time kick butt. So yeah, 1,296 value there. Uh, they cost 1,200, so they went over their value easily. They still had a lot of fight left in them. Picked up a double chevron, so... Yeah, I mean, that, that was that was actually not as close as I thought it would be. And maybe I underestimated the 20% physical resistance there, which is the case. And then the high melee defense. Now, the Chaos Warriors also have high melee defense, but when you're whipping out a 44 melee attack, plus a 30 charge bonus, and remember, bonus versus infantry is applied, I think, to both weapon damage and melee attack. So that's going to actually make these, these ladies hit at 52 on melee attack. And at 44 on weapon strength, I think it goes straight into base attack. I don't think that it goes into the armor piercing attack, but it goes into the base weapon damage. If I'm wrong, someone can please correct me on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how the, um, the bonus works. And then I think charge bonus works similarly. Um, though again, I could be wrong, and if I am, someone please correct me. But it doesn't surprise me that they really can pump out the offensive firepower. Hope you all enjoyed this replay. Air of Carthage signing out for now. I'll be back with more soon, and uh, we'll cover some more multiplayer. I, I do want to start playing some more multiplayer. I apologize. I have not gotten streams done. It's just been very busy, but I will start streaming, and we'll start playing multiplayer on those streams, because I really do want to dedicate some time to multiplayer now that we've had some updates, and I am also enjoying the single player, and those will continue. Um, the gun campaign, I'm still waiting on mods to update. I don't know what's going to happen yet, so it's a good thing we were close to being finished with that one anyway. Um, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm hopeful we'll get to finish it. There's not a ton to finish in it, but I'm hopeful we'll get to finish it. Grom campaign, we can finish. The mods are updated. Um, I just haven't gotten to it yet. So anyway, that's a quick update. Air Carthage signing out for now. I'll see you soon.